Aprende inglés paso a paso. Lección 31. Nivel avanzado. Paso 1. Gramática 1. Passive voice, second and third conditional. Ejercicios a traducir. Esa marca de café se bebería más si fuese más conocida. That brand of coffee would be drunk more if it were better known. Fantastic. Él sería ascendido si trabajara más. He'd be promoted if he worked harder. He'd be promoted if he worked harder. Great. Se limpiarían más a menudo las calles si tuviéramos un presupuesto mayor. The streets would be cleaned more often if we had a bigger budget. Great. Te darían un presupuesto mayor si te quejaras más. You'd be given a bigger budget if you complained more. Good job. Now act to passive voice. We'd use them more if they were in better condition. They'd be used more if they were in better condition. They'd be used more if they were in better condition. They'd provide her with more information if more resources were available. She'd be provided with more information if more resources were available. Good. If more resources or resources. Las dos valen. We'd give them more resources or resources if the company had more money. They'd be given more resources if the company had more money. Good. Now, third condition. Conditional. Castellano al inglés. Él se habría matado si el árbol hubiese caído encima de él. He would have been killed if the tree had fallen on top of him. Good sentence. Se habría entregado el vino a tiempo de no haber habido una huelga. The wine would have been delivered on time had there not been a strike. Fantastic. Se habría terminado el trabajo si hubiéramos contratado a más trabajadores. The work would have been finished if we had hired more workers. Fantastic. Los hombres habrían sido rescatados si el helicóptero hubiese estado de servicio. The men would have been rescued if the helicopter had been in service. The men would have been rescued if the helicopter had been in service. Now, active to passive. We would have informed him had he been in the office at the time. He would have been informed had he been in the office at the time. Good. The police would have warned them had the phone lines been working. They would have been warned had the phone lines been working. Last one. I would have given her another chance if she'd been more cooperative. She would have been given another chance if she'd been more cooperative. Good job, Una. Paso 2 Exprésate como un nativo. Ok, exprésate como un nativo. Una, how do we say perder el control? To lose control. To lo Ejercicios a traducir. Estuve a punto de perder el control. I was about to lose control. I was about to lose control. El jugador perdió el control del balón y cayó al césped. The player lost control of the ball and fell on the grass. Fantastic. Brian perdió el control del coche y chocó con un árbol. Brian lost control of the car and hit a tree. Oh no, poor Brian. Es fácil perder el control de la situación. It's easy to lose control of the situation. Fantastic. Max está fuera de sí. Ha perdido el control completamente. Max is beside himself. He's completely lost control. Good. Max is beside himself. He's completely lost control. Si conduces cuando está helado, probablemente perderás el control de tu vehículo. If you drive when it's icy, you'll probably lose control of your vehicle. Great. Now, let's change. Una, you in Spanish. Mantente en calma y no pierdas el control. Keep Calm and don't lose control. El presidente está perdiendo el control de su propio partido. The president is losing control of his own party. The president is losing control of his own party. Good. Si pierdes el, con el control de la clase, no aprenderán nada. If you lose control of the class, they won't learn anything. Frank está perdiendo el control. Tiene que dejar de beber tanto y conseguir ayuda. Frank's losing control. He needs to stop drinking so much and get help. Yes, Frank's losing control. He needs to stop drinking so much and get help. Cuando le conté el error, a mi jefe se enfadó muchísimo. When I told my boss about the mistake, he really lost control. Simon ha perdido el control. Tiene que poner su vida en orden. Okay, last one. Simon has lost control. He needs to sort his life out. Simon has lost control. He needs to sort his life out. Good work. Paso tres.
pronunciación. Nada de coop board. It's cupboard. Let's go to the examples. Ejercicios a traducir. Tal vez me compre un juego de armarios nuevo para la cocina. I might buy a new set of cupboards for the kitchen. Great. Estos armarios están diseñados por el mejor diseñador de Asia. These cupboards are designed by the best designer in Asia. Good. These cupboards are designed by the best designer in Asia. Limpiaré los armarios después de echarme una siesta. I'll clean the cupboards after having a nap. Fantastic. No nos podemos permitir esos armarios que te gustan. Parece que empezamos desde cero. We can't afford those cupboards you like. Looks like we're back to square one. We can't afford those cupboards you like. Looks like we're back to square one. Los armarios ya habían sido limpiados cuando yo llegué. The cupboards had already been cleaned when I got there. Great. ¿Puedo echar un vistazo al diseño del armario? Can I have a butcher's at the new cupboard design? Good. Can I have a butcher's at the new cupboard design? Han esposado el diseño inicial de los armarios. A ver si me sale. <laughs> They've drawn the initial design for the cupboards. Great. Next page. Los armarios estaban a punto de ser terminados cuando me fui. The cupboards were about to be finished when I left. Great. Todos esos vasos ocup ocupan demasiado espacio en el armario. All those glasses are taking too much space in the cupboard. Todos esos vasos ocupan demasiado espacio en el armario. All those glasses are taking up too much space in the cupboard. Fantastic. ¿Van a estar terminados esos armarios para cuando yo vuelva? Are the cupboards going to be finished by the time I get back? Fantastic. ¿Crees que deberíamos haber limpiado los armarios antes de meter los platos dentro? Do you think we should have cleaned the cupboards before putting the plates in? Great. Three more. Tenemos demasiadas cosas en este armario. We've got far too much stuff in this cupboard. We've got far too much stuff in this cupboard. Two more. Deberías haber limpiado el armario ayer. You should have cleaned the cupboard yesterday. Great. Last one. Estos armarios parecen sucios. These cupboards look dirty. These cupboards look dirty. Great work, Una. Paso 4. Phrasal verb. Okay, it's phrasal verb time. Una, when you're having trouble with something and your friend wants you to keep persevering, what do they say? Stick at it. Stick at it or stick with it. Let's Ejercicios start. Ejercicios a traducir. Tienes que perseverar con tu inglés. No puedes esperar a que ocurra un milagro de la noche a la mañana. You must stick at your English. You can't expect a miracle to happen overnight. Good advice. Next one. Al principio no era un buen jugador de fútbol, pero perseveró y Ahora juega en la selección. Initially, he wasn't a very good football player, but he stuck at it and now he's an international player. Great. Sigue con ello y pronto mejorarás. Stick at it and you'll soon improve. Stick at it and soon you'll improve. Sigue con este curso y escucha el CD todos los días. Tu comprensión auditivo mejorará cada vez más. Stick at this course and listen to the CD every day. Your listening comprehension will get better and better. Good. Your listening comprehension will get Get better and better. No te rindas. Sigue con ello. Don't give up. Stick at it. Good advice. Si persevera, pronto será el mejor de su clase. If he sticks at it, he'll soon be the best in his class. Great. Now, stick with. Que equivale a stick at. Estoy empezando a poner en duda mi plan. Pero voy a seguir con él de cualquier manera. I'm starting to doubt my plan, but I'll stick with it anyway. Good. Stick with it anyway. La clave de tocar un instrumento musical es perseverar en ello. The key to playing a musical instrument is to stick With it. Great. Esta dieta suena muy razonable. Creo que podría seguir con ella. This diet sounds really reasonable. I think I could stick with it. I think I could stick with it or stick at it. Great. El tratamiento es prolongado e invasivo, pero si perseveras, mejorarás mucho. The course of treatment is lengthy and invasive, but if you stick with it, you'll get a lot better. Great. Three more. Ese es un plan interesante. ¿Crees que serás capaz de seguirlo? That's an interesting plan. Do you think you'll be able to stick with it? Great. El Latín es duro, pero si perseveras con él, aprenderás muchísimo sobre tu propio idioma. Latin is tough, but if you stick with it, you learn loads about your own language. Great. Now, last example. Me alegro tanto de no haber tirado la toalla. Ahora puedo afirmar que soy un graduado universitario. I'm so glad I stuck with it. Now I can say I'm a college graduate. Fantastic. I'm so glad I stuck with it. Now I can say I'm a college graduate. You got it, Una. Paso cinco.
vocabulario. Okay, vocabulary time. The vocab we have today is secondary symptoms when you're sick. Ejercicios a traducir. ¿Cuándo empezaste a tener ataques epilépticos? When did you first start having seizures? Good. When did you first start having seizures? Next one. ¿Cuándo fue la primera vez que notaste que padecías visión borrosa? When did you first notice you were suffering from blurred vision? Fantastic. ¿Te acuerdas de cuándo fue la primera vez en que te sentiste somnolento? A ver si me sale. Do you remember when you first felt drowsy? Do you remember when you first felt drowsy? Good. La primera vez que me sentí inquieto fue ayer. Y la primera vez que tuve calambres fue la semana pasada. I first started feeling restless yesterday and I first started having cramps last week. Great. No recuerdo la primera vez en que me sentí mareado. I can't remember when I first started feeling faint. I can't remember when I first started feeling faint. La primera vez que él sintió náuseas fue hace aproximadamente una hora. He first started feeling nauseous about an hour ago. He first started feeling nauseous about an hour ago. Que yo recuerde la primera vez que me sentí mareado fue hace dos días. As far as I remember, I first felt dizzy about two days ago. Fantastic. More examples now with the adverb last. La última vez que sentí náuseas fue ayer. I last felt nauseous yesterday. I last felt nauseous yesterday. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que tuviste la visión borrosa? When did you last have blurred vision? When did you last have blurred vision? Good. La última vez que tuve calambres fue aproximadamente hace un mes. Así que creo que estoy mejorando. I last had cramps about a month ago, so I think I'm getting better. Great. La última vez que ella se sintió inquieta fue esta mañana, pero desde entonces ha estado bastante tranquila. She last felt restless this morning, but since then she's been quite calm. She last felt restless this morning, but since then she's been quite calm. La última vez que me sentí somnoliento fue ayer por la mañana, pero desde entonces me he sentido bien. I last felt drowsy yesterday morning, but since then I've been feeling fine. Great. Cuando la vi por última vez, ella se sentía un poco mareada, así que la llevé al médico. When I last saw her, she was feeling a little faint, so I brought her to the doctor. Great. Last one. La última vez que él se sintió mareado fue hace tres meses y hace más de un año que no ha tenido un ataque epiléptico. He last felt dizzy about three months ago and he hasn't had a seizure in over a year. He last felt dizzy about three months ago and he hasn't had a seizure in over a year. Good work. Paso seis. Gramática 2. Okay, Una, are you ready for more grammar? Yes, I am, provided that you explain it first. Provided that, que equivale a siempre que o siempre y cuando, y que es nuestro punto principal de esta sección. Fíjate, también se puede decir providing that. Ejercicios a traducir. Siempre que no les importe, terminaremos la reunión temprano esta noche. Provided that they don't mind, we'll finish the meeting early tonight. Provided that they don't mind, we'll finish the meeting early tonight. Siempre Siempre que el comité esté de acuerdo, pediremos los materiales inmediatamente. Provided that the committee agrees, we'll order the materials right away. Great. Siempre y cuando la bolsa vaya bien, deberíamos ganar mucho dinero. Provided that the stock market performs well, we should make a lot of money. Provided that the stock market performs well, we should make a lot of money. Siempre que mejores tus notas, te dejaré ir a la excursión de esquí del colegio. Provided that you get your grades up, I'll let you go on the school ski trip. Provided that you get your grades up. I'll let you go on the school ski trips. Siempre que se aprendan la coreografía, podrán bailar en el número final. Provided that they learn the choreography, they'll be able to dance in the closing number. Fantastic. Debería ser una bonita sorpresa, siempre y cuando nadie se entere. It should be a nice surprise, provided that nobody finds out. Last one for this page. No te arrepentirás, siempre y cuando estés dispuesto a prescindir de ciertos lujos. You won't regret it, provided that you're willing to go without certain luxuries. Good. Now, with providing that con ING siempre y cuando lleves puesto un vestido elegante no tendrás problemas para entrar providing that you wear a fancy dress you won't have any trouble getting in good providing that you wear a fancy dress you won't have any trouble getting in siempre y cuando no llueva te esperaré fuera del teatro providing that it doesn't rain I'll wait for you outside the theater great plantaremos más lavanda siempre y cuando los arbustos que plantaste el año pasado se sobrevivan al invierno we'll plant some more lavender 
providing that the bushes you planted last year survive the winter. Great. No deberías tener problemas en la aduanda siempre y cuando te vistas de manera normal. You should have no problems at customs providing that you dress normally. Fantastic. Probablemente vayan un mes a Japón siempre y cuando aprueban sus exámenes. They'll probably go to Japan for a month providing that they pass their exams. They'll probably go to Japan for a month providing that they pass their exams. Three more. No deberías tener problemas para llegar a tu hora siempre y cuando no llueva. You shouldn't have any problems getting there on time providing that it doesn't rain. Great. Estarán encantados de veros siempre y cuando les aviséis que vais con mucha antelación. They'll be delighted to see you providing that you let them know you're coming well in advance. Good. Last one. Encajaremos a la perfección en la fiesta siempre y cuando te cambies esos pantalones cortos y camisa hawaiana. We'll fit right in at the party providing that you change out of those shorts and floral shirts. Good sense to finish. Good job, Una. Paso siete. Verbos irregulares. Cortar el césped. To mow the lawn. To mow the lawn. Every day I mow. Yesterday I mowed. Lately I have mown. How do you say compensar? To offset. To offset. Every day I offset. Yesterday I offset. And lately I have offset. Easy. Last one. Suplicar. How do you say it? To plead. To plead. Every day I plead. Yesterday I pled. And lately I have pled. Ex Ejercicios a traducir. Voy a cortar el césped. I'm going to mow the lawn. I'm going to mow the lawn. Compensamos nuestras pérdidas con recortes presupuestarios. We offset our losses by making budget cuts. We offset our losses by making budget cuts. Puedes suplicar todo lo que quieras. No lo haré. You can plead all you want. I won't do it. Fantastic. Alice ha compensado las pérdidas de su empresa con su propio dinero. Alice has offset her company's losses with her own money. Great. Él ha cortado el césped ya. Has he mown the lawn yet? Has he mown the lawn yet? Good. El acusado se ha declarado inocente. The defendant has pled not guilty. The defendant has pled not guilty. Una, you in Spanish, me in English. Él me está suplicando que use mi propio dinero para compensar las pérdidas de la empresa. He's pleading me to use my own money to offset the company's losses. Fantastic. Una, cambiamos. You in Spanish, me in English. A la larga, las ventas de, de nuestra nueva colección compensarán nuestras pérdidas por el aumento de impuestos. In the long run, sales from our new line will offset our losses due to increased taxes. Suplicaron el cambio. They pled for change. La banda ha acribillado a balazos a todos los que se han interpuesto en su camino. The gang has mown down everyone who's got in their way with the phrasal verb to mow down. La acusada se declaró culpable. The defendant pled guilty. Yes, the defendant pled guilty. Por suerte, habíamos compensado nuestras pérdidas cuando recibimos, recibimos la multa. Luckily, we'd already offset our losses when we received the fine. Ayer corté el césped. I mowed the grass yesterday. I mowed the grass yesterday. Desde que las fuerzas de seguridad acribillaron a balazos a esos manifestantes, los ciudadanos locales están suplicados a los rebeldes que ayuden. Ever since those protesters were mown down by the security forces, local citizens have been pleading the rebels for help. Paso ocho. Comprensión auditiva. Oh. Ejercicios. Una, are you ready for a story? Yes, I am. Okay, well, listen carefully. This is told from the perspective of Melissa. Ricardo, was that you I saw yesterday zooming down 12th Street in a Ferrari? You've really come up in the world. I remember just a few years ago, you were struggling in your business with only two or three precarious customers. Now your picture's in the paper every other week, and TV programs want you on their talk shows. Everyone seems to think you're the source of all wisdom. Okay, Una, I'm going to ask you some questions to see if you understood the text okay. correctly. What does Melissa ask Ricardo? She asks him if that was him she saw yesterday zooming down 12th Street in a Ferrari. Fantastic. Now, has Ricardo come up in the world or gone down in the world? He's really come up in the world. He's really come up in the world, especially if he's driving a Ferrari. Uh -huh. What does Melissa remember Ricardo doing just a few years ago? She remembers him struggling in his business with only one or two precarious customers. Fantastic. Now, these days, how often is Ricardo's picture in the paper? His picture's in the paper every other week. Wow, what a lucky guy. Okay, last question. Question. What does everyone seem to think? Everyone seems to think that he's the source of all wisdom. Perfect. It looks like you got the story. Paso nueve.
Error común. Okay, time to look at a common error that Spanish speakers commit. Now, when we say asistir a una reunión, it's not to assist to a meeting, it's to attend a meeting. Ejercicios. He asistido a dos reuniones en lo que va de día. I've attended two meetings so far today. Fantastic. I've attended two meetings so far today. Algunos de sus amigos de él no pudieron asistir a la ceremonia. Some of his friends weren't able to attend the ceremony. Some of his friends weren't able to attend the ceremony. Great. El jefe quiere que todo el mundo asista. The boss wants everyone to attend. Fantastic. Aprenderás más rápido si asistes al curso. You'll learn quicker if you attend the course. Good. You'll learn quicker if if you attend the course. Somos practicantes. Asistimos a la iglesia de forma habitual. We're churchgoers. We attend church regularly. We're churchgoers. We attend church regularly. Good. Asistí al banquete, pero no fui a la ceremonia. I attended the reception, but I didn't go to the ceremony. Great. Siento no haber podido asistir a la boda. I'm sorry I was unable to attend the wedding. Fantastic. Now, let's look at some sentences, this time in the interrogative form. ¿A cuántas clases has asistido en lo que va de mes? How many classes have you attended so far this this month. Great. How many classes have you attended so far this month? ¿Cuántas personas asistieron a la conferencia? How many people attended the conference? Fantastic. ¿Por qué no asististe a la clase de ayer? Why didn't you attend the lecture yesterday? Why didn't you attend the lecture yesterday? Good. ¿Asististe a la rueda de prensa? Did you attend the press conference? Fantastic. Two more. ¿A qué universidad fuiste? Where did you attend college? Great. Where did you attend college? Otra vez con attend. Now, last one. ¿Por qué no fuiste a su funeral? Why didn't you attend his funeral? Good job, Una. Paso 10. El repaso. Esa marca de café se bebería más si fuese más conocida. That brand of coffee would be drunk more if it were better known. Great. Te darían un presupuesto mayor si te quejaras más. You'd be given a bigger budget if you complained more. Fantastic. Los hombres habrían sido rescatados si el helicóptero hubiese estado de servicio. The men would have been rescued if the helicopter had been in service. The men would have been rescued if the helicopter had been in service. Brian perdió el control del coche y chocó con un árbol. Brian lost control of the car and hit a tree. Oh, Oh no, poor Brian. Next example, Max está fuera de sí. Ha perdido el control completamente. Max is beside himself. He's completely lost control. He's completely lost control. Good. Frank está perdiendo el control. Tiene que dejar de beber tanto y conseguir ayuda. Frank's losing control. He needs to stop drinking so much and get help. Good. Next one, limpiaré los armarios después de echarme una siesta. I'll clean the cupboards after having a nap. I'll clean the cupboards after having a nap. Todos esos vasos ocupan demasiado espacio en el armario. All those glasses are taking up too much space in the cupboard. Great. Sigue con ello y pronto mejorarás. Stick at it and you'll soon improve. Stick at it and you'll soon improve. Good. Si persevera, pronto será el mejor de su clase. If he sticks at it, he'll soon be the best in his class. Good. Me alegro tanto de no haber tirado la toalla. Ahora puedo afirmar que soy un graduado universitario. I'm so glad I stuck with it. Now I can say I'm a college graduate. Excellent. La primera vez que me sentí inquieto fue ayer y la primera vez que tuve calambres fue la semana pasada. I first started feeling restless yesterday and I first started having cramps last week. Good. Que yo recuerde, la primera vez que me sentí mareado fue hace dos días. As far as I remember, I first felt dizzy about two days ago. Good. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que tuviste la visión borrosa? When did you last have blurred vision? When did you last have blurred vision? Good. Debería ser una bonita sorpresa, siempre y cuando nadie se entere. It should be a nice surprise, provided that nobody finds out. Great. No te arrepentirás siempre y cuando estés dispuesto a prescindir de ciertos lujos. You won't regret it provided that you're willing to go without certain luxuries. You won't regret it provided that you're willing to go without certain luxuries. Good. No deberías tener problemas en la aduana siempre y cuando te vistas de manera normal. You should have no problems at customs providing that you dress normally. Great. Puedes suplicar todo lo que quieras. No lo haré. You can plead all you want. I won't do it. You can plead all you want. I won't do it. Good. Alice ha compensado las pérdidas de su empresa con su propio dinero. Alice has offset her company's losses with her own money. Great. Ayer corté el césped. I mowed the grass yesterday. I mowed the grass yesterday. Ricardo, ¿eras tú a quien vi ayer volando por la calle 12 en un Ferrari? Ricardo, was that you I saw yesterday zooming down 12th Street in a Ferrari? Excellent. Recuerdo, tan solo hace unos años que estabas luchando en tu negocio con solo dos o tres clientes precarios. I remember just a few years ago you 
you were struggling in your business with only two or three precarious customers. Excellent. Aprenderás más rápido si asistes al curso. You'll learn quicker if you attend the course. You'll learn quicker if you attend the course. Good. Siento no haber podido asistir a la boda. I'm sorry I was unable to attend the wedding. I'm sorry I was unable to attend the wedding. Great. Last example. ¿A cuántas clases has asistido en lo que va de mes? How many classes have you attended so far this month? Great work, Una. See you next week. Remember, 20 minutes. Si te ha gustado, no dudes en suscribirte al canal de YouTube y seguirnos en Facebook y redes sociales. Hasta el próximo vídeo.